A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Atiullah Tiya Rasul Ulul Amri Minkum. And always a reminder for myself and Abdul Al Jisu Da'ifu, Miskinu, Zalimu, Jahad and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah, Allahu wa la hayya la hayya ya qayyum, Allahu wa la hayya la hayya ya qayyum. Allahu wa la hayya la hayya ya qayyum, 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 Allahu wa la hayya la hayya that we talked about the six powers of the heart and the, the depth of that reality and the ocean of, of guidance and becoming a star. This is all from the holy hadith that this haqqaiq, every haqqaiq Prophet giving from his holy hadith everything opens from these realities that when Sayyidina Muhammad described that, follow my companions, any of my companions, they are like stars on a dark night. Means opened for us the reality of najm and a star that through the darkness of ignorance and the night describes the oceans of ignorance that if you want to follow Khalifai Rashideen and Mahdi'een wa qamileen that my sahabi, my companions, those who accompanied me with their heart, with their actions and with their deeds, they're like stars. I've made them into stars, najm. They are eternal lights. Means that now that we reach the point of understanding and sciences and all these realities that this was a isharat and a guidance for us that take the way of light and become something eternal that you live a life of service and the ultimate service, the ultimate service. That's why when we live a life of service, giving food, donating, serving, being of service with my skill, with my ability, with my rizq, anything that I have I put in the way of Allah and this is still just dunya. So that Allah accept that dunya and say that, I will grant you an eternal service. Eternal service is when Allah ignite the soul of the believer, that your soul to become an eternal reality of guidance. Because guidance and isharat and, and rashideen, a rashid, sifat al-rashid is, is guidance that when Allah open the soul for guidance then that's the concept of the star within the dark heavens, that your light will always guide. When Allah opened for a servant to be an eternal star then they have always been an eternal star. Whatever form they take in this material world and how many times they appear within this material world it doesn't take away from the reality of who their star. So for those who contemplate, contemplate. I mean that's a, a deep reality. That Allah says that you, because Allah has no time, that your soul is from my eternal stars and you'll always shine within my creation. Whatever physicality I put you with within time and in dimensions, your ruh, your soul is always that najm. And that's why Prophet was giving that isharat that my sahabi, any one of them you follow their stars on a dark night, that was enough for that opening to open within the heart of awliyaullah that seek to be of an eternal service. So when you give from the physical world, serve with the physical world, then enter into a, a, a station of guidance in which you're trying to be of service to Allah's creation and guiding them towards realities. Allah give the true gift of guidance in which your soul reaches these six powers and that's why the six, the three points up, three points down, you become Najm al-Sulaiman in which the whole kingdom will be given to that soul and has access 
that soul has access to the entire kingdom of Allah and that's what Sayyidina Sulaiman Salam represented in Qur'an. That if the, the kingdom Allah can give the kingdom to whomever He likes, this kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad and its immensity can be imagined. And Allah is describing that soul that is in submission, live the life of taslim, I'm going to give to it to inherit that kingdom. As a result that soul will become a star in, the, in my heavens. And that star that Prophet described will be giving guidance eternally. So that anyone who's lost on the earth they look up and they can receive even physical guidance, they can get the coordinates of where they are and how they're lost on this world. Spiritually that the tajalli of that star is continuously dressing them. That's why the depth of Haqiqat al-Juzbah, the first that we talk about is like an eternal circle. The depth of juzbah is, is not something that has a limit. If the servant doesn't learn how to connect and how to magnetize themselves, how to take their body and to become magnetized with a charge and the coiling. We said in, in school everyone is taught that you get a rod, a metal rod and the rod has no magnetic connection. As soon as you take an electrical coil and you coil it and wrap it all the way around the rod and connect to a power source, you're actually magnetizing the metal. So when you take that coil and you touch it, it begins to attract all of the paper clips and the school experiments that we did in school. Means becoming magnetized and coiling, well that's the same concept of understanding the madad and the meditation. When you sit for meditation that, Ya Rabbi I want to open the heavenly kingdom within my being. As soon as you learn the madad, the madad and the shaykhs are the power source, they are the battery of Allah that is accessible for creation. They don't take from the trees and, and the air and the atmosphere, they're taking from Allah's servants who are custodians of a Divinely power a Divinely grace. That's why we distinguish between these sci-fi movies where they're taking from the forest, they're taking from electromagnetic energy of the earth. No, they're not taking, that's a limited source of energy and that's not a clean energy from the heavens. But Allah has on this earth, وَكُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ إِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Have consciousness, be a conscious and obedient servant of Allah and keep the company of God's truthful servants. For those truthful servants they contain the covenant of Allah the covenant of Allah and that which Sayyidina Musa was carrying with angels. The covenant of Allah is the holy heart of insan, of people. That if that heart open to the Divinely Kingdom, Thy Kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth that is as it is in heaven means their heart became the kingdom of God. And as a result they hold the covenant and the contract of God within their heart. As a result they are custodians of that light. When you learn to be with them, eat with them, pray with them, accompany them through these modalities in which Allah has offered and opened then you begin to learn how to connect to them. As a result of connecting to them they contain an energy source that not available anywhere, it's an encrypted light. So only now we're understanding coding. There are places that you can get information from and that you may have access to and there are other sources that are highly encrypted and you don't have access to. That's one of the encrypted sources. So that shaitan is not taking that light, shaitan is not using and abusing that light, that is through an encrypted source. So that's why then the madad, as soon as they make the connection, they learn how to make the connection, they study the way of how to make the connection, they begin to open with the permission of Allah the permission of Sayyidina Muhammad and the permission of these awliya, ulul amri minkum. 
that they carry Izzatullah, Izzat Rasul, Izzat al Mu'mineen, they carry Izzat of Allah, the power of Allah is moving within them. As a result, this encrypted code, encrypted light begin to enter within their reality. And that is the reality of becoming magnetized. Everything about them is going from silver to gold and that's what we talked last night, that is the alchemy. The, the, the way of alchemy and the Sufi alchemy, the path of alchemy was not to take the silver of the material world and turn it to gold, what they want from the, the, the physical world. What are you going to do with gold like karun and holding treasures of gold going nowhere? The real purpose of making gold was to turn people's hearts into gold, something precious for the Divinely Presence. To take that which is of a regular metal, iron metal, dirty copper metals within people or steel and to make it into something of value to the Divinely Presence, to make their hearts like gold. As a result of the heart being gold and precious, it can contain Divinely grace and emanations that begin to dress it. We've described before how can God's grace dress a heart that's like styrofoam, as soon as that energy comes it melts and dissipates everything. So the heart has to be turned into a golden vessel for the Divinely Presence, clean and purified as a result of their training in juzba, becoming magnetic, becoming magnetized and filled with energies, they become a magnet. Because anything that's connecting with a magnet is being magnetized. That's what the reality of when we say juzba, you have a juzba, you have, you have a magnetic character where people are attracted to you, your speech and your light. And they want to be around magnetic people because the charge of that person is a very positive charge. As a result they take away the negativities of other people. So one, this magnet in dealing with students is that it immediately puts a charge and the students which are of a negative charge are directed and guided towards that magnet. So this is not of their own doing, this is not the way to force people to follow you and keep putting out things that you have to follow me. They can't follow if they're not feeling a, an attraction within their heart because this is not business and this is not the physical world. The physical world you say follow and your advice on financial issues and every mind is listening to you. But this in dealing with the people of the heart, if their heart has no connection with you, you cannot force them to follow you. The heart has no feeling for that person because they're not understanding that Allah is in charge of this juzba. Allah is putting this charge of this student who became a shaykh, is now trained. Allah puts the charge within that individual. And they merely do the work that they've been guided to do and Allah is in charge of who will be coming to you. That's why they don't seek out people. They seek out openings, so means for an example for us to understand, they open a door to a channel for example, they immediately begin to do what Allah guided them to do of their teaching, their style of teaching, the rest is for Allah He's going to determine which of these paper clips if we want to understand will be attracted to that magnet. Not the shaykh can go out and grab people and force people to listen to them, it's just they provide and they keep praying for an opening, Ya Rabbi granting us an opening through that door. As soon as that door opens they do what they've been trained to do and Allah begins to send the attraction of people who will be attracted to that magnet, the flavor of that magnet and the teachings of that magnet. That's the reality of how the shaykh has juzbah on earth. They teach what they need to teach, that's why they need the modalities, they need the book, they need the videos, they need the postings, they need the social media to get the message of what Allah want them to disseminate. The rest is from Allah who's going to come, who's going to be attracted. 
That's why they don't go out and put out ads in the paper that you have to follow, you have to do this because it's not in their hands. They merely put the ad out of this is the teachings and then from the thousand that listen, fifty of them are attracted to that teacher and they begin to levitate and move towards that reality and that not even within their own hand and their own minds. If you read the comments on the videos that are being posted, they say, I'm a Christian and I believe in my book but I'm attracted to what you're saying. That's a, that is the juzbah. It's not that we go on the phone and we force this guy, please can you please watch my video? You have to watch my video. No. Is the juzbah is that his heart, regardless of what his brain has studied, his heart is in God's hands. And God is the one who controls the heart and says, listen to this magnet. And if you listen, you feel an attraction from heart to heart. There are even video comments that I don't even understand an hour of what you were talking about because of your Arabic phonics and the words that you use from Arabic to English words. So unfortunately a lot of our words may be lost in translations. But he says, I didn't understand it but I was crying the whole time watching it. Because again this is a system through the heart. The mouth is saying things for entertainment for people but the energy that's being moved through heart to heart that is the haqqaiq and the reality. That is the grace of the Divine that moves through the heart of the one speaking to the ones whom listening through their heart system. That is the reality of the juzbah and magnetism for the connection between the, the teacher and the student. Now between the teacher and his teachers that's now the juzbah of how they connect. So imagine again if they didn't train on this step, that's why you find a lot of people angry, oh they don't listen to me, people don't follow me, they only follow you. And many times they become jealous and they would try to destroy these types of people. So the history of Islam was deep into that. They wanted to kill Imam Hussain because he had immense juzbah. They say, as long as you're on this earth, people want to take your hand and not our hand. So better we take you from this earth and get rid of this problem. And this was again the immensity of the jealousy of juzbah and what Allah put within the heart of a servant. That Allah put that connection, Allah put that energy, Allah put that magnetism and as a result people are attracted to that reality. And the one whom doesn't study that way because those holy souls were given that juzbah, the other ones are being trained in the way of that juzbah. If they don't train for the magnetism then there's nothing that is in their heart emanating for people to be attracted to. Now even more dangerous is the system between the shaykh to his shaykhs is that when he's been trained in juzbah, been trained in magnetism, as soon as he makes his connection the energy frequency is going to their reality. In the spiritual world there's no tiring, there's no being tired. Their souls can be infinite number of places in an instant. As soon as they're trained and they make their connection, they prepare themselves for their… the, the speech they're supposed to give, the association they're supposed to attend, immediately their juzbah goes to attract their shaykhs. Their shaykh, the shaykh, the shaykh, the shaykh all the way to Sahabi Kiram, Ahlul Bayt and Nabi, all the way to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Their magnet goes on for the heavens and as a result is attracting the nazar of the holy ones. And as a result of their magnet attracting the nazar of holy ones, they begin to receive the nazar upon themselves. So we can understand the immensity of juzbah. So when the shaykh is trained he turns his energy on and immediately the frequency goes out and attracts then the higher heavens attraction. So the shaykhs at the heavens are now picking the signal up of that shaykh and they begin to send the fires upon that shaykh. Without that the shaykh can't speak nothing, there's nothing to say, nothing to talk about, he's not attracted the, 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 
the connection to the heavens so as a result he's useless to anybody on earth. This is the difference between real and fake, real and fake. Fake connects to nothing above, nothing in the heavens is connecting to that shaykh, nothing is, is with a juzba connected to them and nothing sending a fayaz to them. So we said the next haqqaiq is the fayaz, that once you connect with the big, the big souls of the tariqah and all the, the holy companions and Ahlul Bayt all the way to the presence of Holy Sayyidina Muhammad this magnetic connection from ishq and love in their heart when they connect what happens? What we say, unzur haluna, that's why Allah clarified this connection. That all you who want to be connecting, the ayah should have said, is don't say, listen to me, but say, unzur haluna. Means don't ask Prophet to listen to you because his samina wa tanna his ears and the sifat of hearing is only for the Divinely Presence. He listens to nobody but Allah But in that holy verse Allah is giving the secret of the nazar of Prophet Ishfalana, just please keep your gaze upon me, why? Because that's the holy power station. If the power station of Prophet nazar immediately falls upon that soul then imagine all the nazars are following. Because if, if, the, if it was worth the gaze of Prophet imagine then how much the Ahlul Bayt love, how much Sahabi love, how much awliyaullah love and are in service to that nazar that immediately it attracts all the nazar upon that soul of that servant. And as a result of the immensity of the nazar upon that shaykh's soul that's what he has of a food to give to his students that are also connecting with him. So we see from the heavenly power the shaykh is an intermediary on earth and then all the students that are learning how to make the connection. So the magnet goes up first to the heavens, connects, the fires begins to dress, the emanation, the talks, the inspirations. As a result that shaykh becomes fulukul mashkhoon, a loaded ship. Their soul is loaded with energies and knowledges. The minute they begin to disseminate that then all those whom learn how to connect they begin to receive the fires of that shaykh. And that is the haqqaiq that they, they're asking to train. So when we train with the connection it is the whole way. It's not a part of the way, it's the only way. If you didn't train in juzba, you don't have a connection up and as a result nobody wants to connect with you down because there's nothing in you, you're not a magnet, you're a piece of metal. Nobody can connect with metal other than you put a rope and you force people and tie them to you by force. So because this connection is not by force. Nobody's imprisoned and confined to a camp or a farm where we all have to live together by force. This is a connection based on ishq and muhabbat, love, love and respect. That through love and respect the hearts are connected and wherever they are on this earth people are connected, interested in that level of teaching, that guidance. As a result that juzba is there and that juzba is in existence because of the fires and the juzba above, that they have the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad. This is the dalil and the proof of why people are connected to them, why people are interested in their teachings. They can't force people to, but because the fires of Prophet emanates through them, as a result it emanates to the people, people are attracted and the personality is less important and is not important. What's important is the fires of Prophet is flowing through them and the knowledges are flowing through them. If they should do something wrong and inappropriate against the way of Sayyidina Muhammad their fires will be cut. And as a result you see many of the students will run and and it'll be gone, they have no more connection with that person. So what keeps us is not a physical rope but the spiritual rope 
of faiz and connection. And that's through muhabbat and through the love and through the connection to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Because it's a delicate connection, that's why everything they do is always with istighfar, asking forgiveness if they've done anything to, to upset the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result there is a reality of their taqwa. They're continuously in that engagement and in that connection that if I'm doing anything wrong forgive me, guide me, shahidan. For them it's a different level than what we described before. They are in direct communication with that light, shahidan that Prophet Allah is describing, He's witnessing you. You know that because you're connecting with Him. This is the level of the shaykh to that reality, shahidan. Mubashiran, he's happy, he's sending his fires to you. Wunnadiran, he'll begin to describe, I'm not happy with that action that you're doing. You do it anymore and this connection cuts. So that's taqwa. That for them is their real taqwa. The real taqwa, not the, the person at the, at the imam at the mosque saying, this taqwa is this, taqwa is this, but he's behind six feet of, of metal and never seen or felt anything. That's not taqwa, real taqwa is when you're in their presence and they're guiding you and they're telling you your whole life and your life support is this fires and this connection. For if they cut you, you die and wither away in an instant. Only way you're surviving on this earth because they dressed you from that reality, that blessed you from that reality, you taste, breathe, eat and drink from that reality, as a result you're being fed from that reality. It's like you're now a, from a foreign land, you're, from a, you're on a spaceship walking on an earth that's not yours. You have a mask and you breathe from the fires of Sayyidina Muhammad Can you imagine for one minute that to be cut? How they have absolutely become nothing, they've become lost, they've, they've become scattered. There nothing for them would be of any importance anymore. So everything has to be governed with that reality that, Ilayanta maqsudi wa ridat matloob, I'm begging your forgiveness and seeking your satisfaction, that you are consistently content with me and that forgive me for all the wrongs and, and any direction that I'm going incorrectly. Because nobody's perfect but we sought a path of perfection, that's how they live their lives and that's what's important for them. If they do it they receive the fires, they receive the satisfaction, if the ridha of Sayyidina Muhammad is upon them, dressing them, blessing them, then this fires and knowledges dissipate out towards the students that are connecting and that's the reality of the, the juzbah and the reality of the fires and, and downpouring and emanations and dressings and blessings. Haqiqatul tawajjo is in that same reality that when they learn to connect and they made their connection and they went deep into their connection they asked from everything that is perishing that dress me from your dress, that I'm nothing. And they began to take a deeper path into annihilating themselves that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And then we put out some of the 40 rules from Rumi and they had nice explanations for if you're nothing why are you to be upset about anything? Hmm? When someone insults you aggravates you, bothers you, why to be upset? If you took a path in which to be nothing, who's upset? Your nafs or the soul? So then that had to become real. So then this, this haqiqat al tawajjuh, the reality of the face and connecting with the face say it in English is much easier for me, is that the reality to connect with the face is an, a new level in which to really understand your nothing. 
And that's why then through touring and, and accompanying the shaykhs and it was complete oceans of humiliation. One test after another humiliating, humiliating, humiliating in front of people, in front of crowds of people, in private all the time, all the time. Why? Was to crush the self. So the, the, the shaykh who's been trained, that's why you don't go into an area and say, like, here shaykh, here shaykh, here shaykh. They don't have juzbah, they don't have uh, fayas and they don't have any connection with the tawajjuh. They don't have a connection with the face. So this process of annihilating was only through the crushing in which that reality of yourself doesn't exist. So all are going to make it real. For every time they crushed and humiliated, it wasn't your soul that was humiliated, it was your ego. So if you run to the defense of the ego then you're giving the ego its life support. And then your process of dying becomes that much harder. Means they want you, they're asking you, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq is asking you, Mawt qabl al mawt you want death before death or you're going to sit and play with your ego for the next 25 years? <coughs> you have a process to learn. So then humiliation would come, a big test would come and you connect with your muraqabah, you connect with your connection and they tell you your soul has not been insulted. Because if your soul was attacked, it was an attack against Allah and His Rasul But your soul wasn't attacked. What you feel is the pain and the sting of a humiliation towards your nafs. And you stay quiet, you say, stay quiet and you stay quiet because you want the nafs to die, you want the nafs to be nothing. But that requires a very strong connection. Because as they beating the nafs the connection must be increasing because if they beat the nafs and you have no creation connection then that's just it's not going to happen. Those are the people who continuously are arguing and fighting back. But the process of connecting is every time they're hurt by the nafs they connect and the connection becomes stronger. And then the shaykh begins to open a very strong connection to his ruhaniyat and to his soul. And this is by permission of Prophet it's not the shaykh. When we say that the shaykh is connecting and opening from his soul, it's not him saying, okay here soul, go to him. It's Allah allowing the soul of that shaykh to draw closer to the student. And Allah giving the ishara to Prophet when Prophet feels it's necessary and okay and signed for it. Says now the soul of that shaykh, the soul of his shaykh, known to the shaykh or not, will draw closer to the student in which the student can begin to connect with his face. As a result they see the, the wajh, they see the face of the shaykh and they receive the emanation from the face of the shaykh. So every time the shaykh's face appears to them and not talking about a dream where you saw the shaykh, you didn't have a turban, you didn't have a beard, those are all imperfections in your own character. This is through you know live muraqabah that they're connecting live, they're not sleeping, it's not hallucinating, they're in a connection. As a result of the connection they know how they've been tested in life so it's not imagination that the face of the shaykh begins to appear in their meditation and begins to dress them and dresses them from seven essences and this dress is then a continuous dress upon them from asami al basir begin to dress for them the ability to hear, the ability to see, alim al-qadir begin to dress from Allah's ancient knowledges, Allah's ancient oceans of power, alim al-qadir nur al-hayy begin to dress them with nur and light from Allah's Divinely and oceans of al-hayyat Means these seven essences are continuously dressing their soul from face to face. No longer tajalli only dressing their soul on the body but from the face is dressing their face until their face becomes the perfected face that receives that tajalli. And that is the reality of the reality of the face and tawajjuh. As a result of the tawajjuh and the connection with the face, then what's the next obvious opening? Is the tawassul. 
Because if your face is connecting means your mobile connection is very strong. That your face is connecting to that ocean of power, it's receiving emanation from them. So these shaykhs who have reached these levels, if other shaykhs are like satellites, these are like global positioning shaykhs. Their souls are immense and they receive heavenly coordinates upon their face and as a result their tajalli is dressing many, many awliyaullah all on a, on a different scale because they reach from the face. So if you imagine a big radar station and some are connecting their radar from lower levels, those whom are receiving from this reality of tawajjo means that they receive the connection from their face, from their face it begin to emanate throughout the earth to all the different levels of awliya and they connect from lower levels of their body but not from face. So the face to face awliya are very limited covering this earth. As a result Habibat al-Tawassul, the ability to convey what Allah wants conveyed. So it doesn't mean that you email him that, I want this, 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 now use this and make the connection. But those are realities for the soul in which Allah when it comes to the soul that convey such and such du'a for such and such condition for such and such, whatever Allah wants, that soul when it begins to convey, it's conveying from the authority of their face to the connection of the face in which Allah has established them. As a result the tawajjo and the tawassul it has the ability to convey that reality. So then Allah perfected their line of communication. What being conveyed to the shaykh is a very highly encrypted reality and what the shaykh has is a reality to convey back again on an encrypted signal at a very high level of conveyance. So then that becomes, that's why people seek out these awliya for du'as. Doesn't mean everything you ask is going to be granted but know that it has been requested. When the request is something that Allah put within their heart that, I'm happy that servant asked that from you and I'm granting you to make the full communication. At that time they'll be guided in which to fully ask with their authority that such and such has to be requested. That has to come from the permission of Allah through permission of Sayyidina Muhammad through the permission of their shaykhs. Because Allah looks for the sign of humility in people. When people say, Allah can answer directly, of course. Allah can do everything ex- directly, He could throw me and you off of this earth and do everything Himself. But that wasn't this earth's game. The, the game on this earth was a path of humility. Allah wants to see, are you a humble servant? Because if you're not humble and you begin to become arrogant, why would God grant arrogance? What would grant a character to build arrogance? God wants us to keep the fellowship of love. But we said the Lord of the Rings and some of these marketing understandings, Allah wants the fellowship of love that keep the company of like-minded, like-hearted people. Allah loves the jama'ah, we pray in jama'ah, we don't pray by ourselves where Allah just answer all our prayers. Allah loves for us to come together and then build character, test each other and see humility. That when the servant even has an ability themselves to ask directly but then they are humble, say, please oh pray for me, oh I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing because Allah loves humility. Be humble when you approach me, don't, don't have the character of arrogance because that is from the characteristics of shaitan. So always to show ourselves as nothing, that we're no one and to seek a path through humility and wish to pray for us and inshaAllah Allah be happy and pleased with us. And that becomes the characteristic in which Allah happy with, haqiqat al-tai, haqiqat al-tai. That first tai and first reality of, of speed and movement is through the tongue, haqiqat al-tai al-lisan. That there's a power within the tongue when the servant 
locks their tongue to the roof of their mouth. And when they're in their muraqabah, their meditation, they enter into position what we call sealed. So they meditate, immediately lock the tongue to the palate of the mouth and when they connect their heart this tie and lisan begin to open an enormous amount of speed in their zikr. So many people will ask that how you people do the zikr so fast, how can you do so many things so fast? It's bit Allah has to open this reality so that in their zikrs, their meditation, their connections are coming that they can begin through the heart to make very large amounts of zikr in very short amount of times. So their zikr like speed of light but very conscious but very fast it's moving. Even their recitations of surahs like speed of light versus speed of tongue Allah, Allah, Allah like that but Allah, moving through their heart through a light. Allah opened for them that reality through their seclusions because they're given very long and big awrads to recite and they can't be achieved just by normal means. So then these realities open for those whom seclude themselves, they do their zikr and make their connection. Again, don't say, I make a lot of zikr and these things are not opening because if you make a lot of zikr and lot of different wazifas without a connection, you can go mad. Just sitting and reciting a whole bunch of things and the thousands and thousands but yet you don't have a connection, you don't have a security built with you that you're connected to a shaykh or shaykhs or to the tariqah then that can be very dangerous because you're opening a power that you don't know how to control, you don't know how to contain and you don't know what it's attracting as a, as a, as a counter. Every light opens up a counter from shaitan. So it means when the shaykhs build the person, they're building them with all of the resources, all of their protections so that every step they're being guarded and being built. So you don't just sort of build yourself with an enormous amount of practices without making the foundation which is the muraqabah. So haqiqatul lisan is that when Allah opens the speed in which they can recite and do their wazifas and when they meditate and recite the speed in which it's reciting through their heart. Then haqiqat al-lisan al-badan that the movement through space and time and we describe that in the, the, the talks on the, the Mandela effect. That, that, that again I heard the, the CERN will be opening again in March. So that again shaitan is going to be using this, this system and opening. But the Tai al-Badan is a system in which Allah can… this earth is like an A, B, C. At any time Allah can fold A and C from point A, fold over to point C and cross over the B. So means that Allah described the earth are like scrolls at any time He can fold them. So with power of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem the servant can move from one point to the next point and that's through their spiritual ability that their soul is governing their physicality with all of these energies and practices. Because this is now the reality of moving towards uh, irshad and guidance. So these are the last stages and the most difficult stages that the servant accomplish the mawt qabl and mawt, their soul is governing their reality and as a result of that reality their soul can move. They can move from location to location with their soul and as a result of the last days and the advent of all these mobile phones that's not being used because of the closeness to the proximity of dajjal and miracles and, and conveying of, of bizarre events that's not necessary. Allah if needed can make a shaykh appear in many places at the same time. <coughs> but their need to move from point A to point C is being held for the time of Sayyidina Mahdi at which point <coughs> that would be open. 
and Allah will make their movements and all them who've been trained in that reality, their movement with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. They merely step and where Allah want them to appear, they'll be appearing. As a result of that movement and the power that Allah gives within their tongue and the ability for their heart to convey their zikrs, Allah begin to open Haqiqatul Irshad and Irshad means that been given the secrets of guidance. And that's what Prophet described, my companions are like stars. So this was all the way of becoming a star. So that these six powers have to dress the heart and bless the heart so that they can reach towards their, their star reality. We say a star is born, that as soon as Allah dress them and now want to give the servant irshad and guidance and that, that time they receive an ijazah of guidance that you have been given the reality of irshad. As a result it manifests with the ijazah of guidance. As a result of that the, uh, the certificate of guidance, the reality of irshad means that Allah is dressing them from these powers, blessing them with these powers, that their guidance is with the heart that been lit and dressed with these realities. That with this reality of juzbah, the reality of their connection, their fires, the reality of their face connecting, the reality of the ability to convey their dhikr, the ability to to convey large amounts of zikrs and short period of time, all of these is that Allah perfect them as a star with the star of guidance. And then as a result then they become from the dress of the companions dress them, the Ahlul Bayt dress them and they become Rashideen, Mahdeen wa Qamileen. That Allah dress them Sifat al-Rashid that my, my reality of guidance dressing upon you, blessing upon you, that your face dressed upon this reality, that you inherit the face of the prophetic reality. That's what we started at the beginning of the whole understanding that Allah make the Prophets of Allah why they became and what was the, the power of their prophecy is that their ears from Hali, the holy the Hadith al-Qudsi that you do your fard and now you did all the voluntary acts of love, I became your hearing, I became your seeing, I became the breath in which you breathe, the tongue in which you speak, the hands in, in which you touch, the feet in which you move and that your, your heart and what you ask is, is kun fayakun so much so you are Rabbaniyoon means that this is a star and that's the reality of a star and that it represents Allah's eternal kingdom that you now I've granted for you, I accepted all of your minor service and now I granted for you an eternal service because their star is now eternally of service. Their body dies but their service never ends, their guidance is, is guiding this kingdom for eternity and that they have always guided the kingdoms for eternity and all the Prophets of Allah means the immensity of their light and the immensity of that reality is only Allah knows. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensity of these realities that as we grow, draw closer to the last days in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi salam, that these realities begin to unfold very quickly within the hearts of those servants in which whom Allah guides and brings to that reality. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha